What factors um, led you to take this to in the, into the nonprofit space as opposed to the for-profit world? Where That's a perfect question. Obviously, you would be <laughs> maybe not sitting with us be, today. Because, because here's the thing. People would buy this content. This now, you may not have known that on day one, but on day 100, you probably saw, hmm, this is catching on. Even if it were a nominal cost, yeah, it, it, would, no. it would be a successful, potentially successful for-profit business. Yeah, and I might be dressed a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was... When all of this was happening, I mean, I had my day job. It was a very for-profit day job. I was an analyst at a hedge fund. And, uh, but when I was doing this, I was getting, like, letter. You know, obviously, I saw my cousins, how much it, it impacted and their And it life. took you ye five years before you quit the hedge fund job? Yeah, I was, I was doing this as a side. You know, from 2004 is when I started tutoring Nadia. 2006 made the first video. 2009 Nine. is when I quit the, right. my, my hedge fund job. Uh, 2008 was when I set it up as a not-for-profit. But the, the thinking was, in 2008... And there were some venture capitalists who wanted to fund this. They were ready to write the check, and it was tempting because, like, hey, maybe have your cake and eat it too type of thing. Um, but I just, I literally, I mean, I was getting letters every day from people all over the planet about right. how much it was helping them. And in my brain, and it wasn't that coherent, uh, it, it was actually an emotional decision. It was much more of, like, this feels like we're at an inflection point in history, as big as any, as big as the Industrial Revolution or the, you know, the, the Enlightenment or bigger. And... It feels like we need something like this to be an institution for this inflection point, just a public good. And I kind of just thought about, well, let's, let's imagine a, you know, let's put my science fiction, let's imagine a home run in either use case as a, as a for-profit. Yeah, maybe it turns into a multi-billion dollar organization. And even, look, you can still have a lot of scale and impact and do good things there. Uh, but, you know, who knows what happens in the next generation? What happens when it becomes right. public? And, you know, I, I used to study these companies. Also, and, you're going to be suspect if it's for profit. Right. That you're somehow What's making decisions exactly. that enrich you as opposed to enrich exactly. them. Exactly. What's right? your motivations there right. versus, well, what if it's a home run as a not-for-profit, which in a lot of ways is harder. But what if it could be the next Smithsonian? What if it could be, and it was delusional for a guy operating out of a closet. <laughs> uh, but but it's, it's less delusional now. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, it just felt epic. You know, I'm a big fan of Isaac Asimov and the Foundation series. And, you know, here, you know, he writes about Harry Seldon creates a foundation to uh, have the, the galaxy, the galactic empire's knowledge to keep the, 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 for, the, the impending dark ages, instead of being 10,000 years, to be 1,000 years. And when you read a book like that and you say, how come we don't think on that scale? How come we don't think on, on like, and, like, you know, we only live once. Why don't we at least try? And that was kind of the, you know, swing for the fences. Thank you. This, uh, Thank you.